Make sure to use our code FLIPSIDE to get a two-week subscription to the Key Collector app. Welcome to Tales from the Flip Side, bring you another uh, Prospect 10 list, uh, where we bring you five additional books that you can only see here on the YouTube channel. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start with number 15. At number 15, we have Contest of Champions number four, The Variants. Okay, so this is uh, done by an artist named Kabam, which I just uh, found out today. And this is the same artist that did the very popular uh, Contest of Champions number five variant uh, featuring Kamala Khan and Spider-Gwen. And uh, the rap on this, what I what I like about this is that it uh, has the uh, ever popular Silver Surfer number four uh, cover swipe. And uh, fe and it's also featuring Jane Foster's Thor. I don't. I just don't think Jane Foster Mania has uh, taken the country by storm yet. And uh, when people see Jane Foster and uh, or they see this and they see this cover as well, um, I think they're. I, th I think people will really gravitate to it. Also. It's a, just a fun cover. This is a fun cover, and I'm surprised that uh, a lot of people haven't picked up on it already, regardless. At our number 14 book, we have Faust number 15. So recent news has uh, announced that Faust is being optioned. So this is the final issue after 25 years, and it is currently a ghost. Uh, there's also a blank cover that uh, if you're out searching for it, it's, uh, you know, they're out there, maybe. So uh, you also have, you know, um, the regular cover, which we've had on our uh, ghost presentations with Mr. Longshort. So be on the lookout for this. At number 13, we have Daredevil number 612, the 1 in 10 incentive variant. So uh, this is an awesome cover by, I believe, Phil Noto. Um, this is the first Netflix variant of Kingpin and Daredevil. There's rumors that Charlie Cox will be in the next uh, Doctor Strange film, also possibly in the next Spider-Man movie. We also have rumors that Kingpin, also played by Vincent Donofrio, but uh, he might be showing up in the new Echo series uh, on Disney+. Plus. We see how um, the Punisher uh, photo variant on Punisher 218 with John Barenthal on the cover has really shot up in value. And this book is only going for, I believe, 10 bucks. Uh, so this is an awesome first appearance cover of uh, the Netflix Kingpin and Daredevil from season one. Awesome, awesome cover. A point I'd like to make is fans really love the renditions of the Kingpin and uh, Daredevil by Cox and D'Onofrio. And uh, this seems like a no-brainer for uh, fans of the TV show and just for Daredevil fans in general. At our number 12 book, we have uh, Elektra number one, the hip-hop variant. So this is an, another awesome hip hop cover done by Karen Grant, um, who also did the all new Wolverine comic book that homaged uh, DMX. So here we have uh, a Jay-Z American Gangster album homage. It's quite cool. Um, on the electric cover, you have all the chairs down, which is kind of a, a nice take to it. Uh, with all things Jay-Z possibly getting noticed for comics with uh, his group acquiring CGC. Uh, this is another book to chase for hip-hop homage covers. You also have the Black Panther one as well. So uh, this one is a little bit off the radar. It re was released in 2017, which has a shorter run for these variants. I'm a firm believer that maybe Jay-Z can, you know, get that shirt off the shoulder for uh, the corporation. So let's see what happens. Would you say there's 9.9 .9 problems with a 10 8 one? I think you might get a bump. At number 11, we have Marvel feature number one. So this is an awesome white cover. And you look at at this time period of comics, 
you do not have many comics that are devoted strictly to a female character. Uh, so here we have it for Red Sonia, and this is the first story that is devoted to her, and this is her her, her first series. Or, and um, I think it's brilliant, a brilliant pick. Um, hard to get in nine point eight, hard to get in high grade. There's a movie coming out. This is the one to chase if you're out on Conan twenty three twenty four. I uh, I really, really like this pick. And for the reason everyone's here, our top 10. At number 10, we have a walk through hell, number one. A couple days ago, we had a, uh, a group meeting and just to sort of bounce ideas off one another. So I asked the question, based on the success of the boys, uh, with with Gar Garth Ennis, you know, you know he's a bankable writer, which and he's very prolific. So, which of his titles do we think is going to pop next? And thanks to some contributions, uh, especially if I recall correctly, uh, Andy, I know who, who's big into indie comics. I know definitely mentioned this title. Um, I know I I read it before. Uh, a Walk Through Hell is a, a horror story that would ad adapt well to TV. Uh, and there was rumors of about two, three years ago that it was optioned, but uh, nothing concrete. So, and, and I know Aftershocks, uh, high, you know, did, did a key hire for someone to help their comic properties make it uh, in, into uh, other medias or mediums. So this was kind of a, a group, a group pick uh, led by Andy. And uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's a good one to follow the boys. For our number nine book, we have what the number 10. This is the first appearance of Bart Simpson in a comic. So, uh, and this was a, a Topher pick. Considering um, the rise in value of Simpsons 1, this book is, is thought to be undervalued. It also contains a rare appearance of Calvin and Hobbes. And basically the storyline is that Captain America is looking for a new sidekick, so he holds tryouts to fill the position. So young, famous cartoons stand in line, and some of whom yell out their popular catchphrases in the hopes of winning, and one of those is Bart Simpson. Uh, two notes, uh, Marge Simpson makes an early appearance on a screen on New Mutant in Summer Special 1990, uh, which is also, <laughs> only Topher could come up with this, which is also the first comic appearance of Doogie Howser. Uh, now, I remember talking with Topher about this book, I think it was earlier this year or last year, because I had discovered in... Silver Surfer number 41 from 1990. There's a Bart Simpson alien looking. Uh, there, there's Bart Simpson, but he kind of has like three eyes. So there's kind of a lot of plays um, on, on this. But if, if you want the one that actually, you know, has a normal looking Bart Simpson, who's, you know, spouting a, a catchphrase and also, you know, Calvin and Hobbes as well. So uh, this is a this is a good pick, and it's really cheap. It's like five dollars. At our number eight book, we have Department of Truth number nine, the Banksy homage retailer variant. So Chin Porter has done this um, the store exclusive. The uh, print count for this book is five hundred are printed. This was a uh, this book was picked by Blue Green Artifacts, who couldn't make it here tonight. Um, certain subjects pull in collectors from outside the comic realm, and Banksy is one, like a fine art hip hop variant. So this is a very limited run. We've also talked about this on when we were talking about store exclusives a couple months ago, and just so everyone knows, there's also uh, Chen Porter has also done a Banksy homage for issue number ten through the same retailer. Definitely big potential with this book. You know, with Banksy being like one of the hard, hottest street, most well-known street artists throughout the world. I love this cover and I love the series. At number seven, 
we have U.S. Avengers number one. Okay. Uh, I remember hearing an online conversation about uh, the Red Hulk in the MCU and how you can have him with while the, the, the actor playing General Ross might be a little bit too old for the part even you know, you know even though things are cgi still it might be a really physical role and uh i immediately thought of general robert maverick who uh was the uh new red hulk uh, by way of the hulk plug-in uh, that gives temporary hulk powers uh, you can't have it you know for a sustain for a, a really long period but uh, you do gain Hulk powers. This book came to mind, and this is the first appearance of General Maverick as the Red Hulk. Uh, this book is really cheap. This thing is this th this thing is basically cover price or less. I, w I personally wouldn't expect to pay uh, more than cover price for this book. And uh, there's a lot, there's a lot going for it as well. You also have the first appearance of Tony Ho as the as the new Iron Patriot, and uh, and on top of that, it's a good cover. And on top of that, there is a one in twenty five variant featuring the Red Hulk, uh, kind of in the Uncle Sam pose, which goes for ratio. So I like this book a lot. Um, it's long shot spec, but uh, since the buy-in is so low, it could be profitable if uh, things do pan out. At number six, we have Marvel Comics 1001, the Diodato variant. This is a pretty cool cover. You know, uh, the Macerator was a character that used to be in the, I think, the old Timely comics. And then uh, they've brought him back. Supposedly, he's going to be in the, the lineup of the new Defenders. He was supposed to have a, a solo title. I guess in, in 2019, they said he was going to have his own standalone title and COVID hit. So I, I don't know if that's come to pass yet. But a good spec, you know, everybody's always specking on new characters. So that might be uh, some low hanging fruit there. Um, it's just a cool cover. It's a one in 25 incentive. Uh, it's supposed to reveal some some secrets on on. Uh, the mask that gives him his power eternity mask so uh this is a mask that gives that character their power so i guess uh we'll have to read it to find out what secrets they reveal but this is something that if somebody was looking to spec on something this this might be uh one to take a chance on for our number five book we have avengers number zero we talked about uh, general maverick and the as as the red hulk well, this is the first overall appearance of General Robert Maverick, so why not uh, complete the set? And uh, there's a, there's also a number of first appearances in this book as well. So uh, again, this is a cover price or less book. Honestly, you could probably find this book for a, in the dollar bin somewhere. This is a type of book that could have legs in the future. And I think Tolfer said that this is the book where Deadpool joins the Avengers, right? But yeah, yes. I think yes, you remember, I remember yes, him saying that's that. Correct. Yeah, that is, that's correct. Okay. Now it's it's a tough book also to get in a high grade. It's it's a pretty fat book. It's got some binary issues, so they're they're really hard to find in high grade. I do know that. Mm -hmm. At number four, we have Teen Titans number six. So when you think about the Teen Titans, you think about Beast Boy. When you think about Beast Boy you think about Teen Titans, but he wasn't an original member of the initial Teen Titans roster. Matter of fact, he didn't appear in a teen, until Teen Titans number six. That was the first meeting of Beast Boy and Teen Titans. And basically the story is uh, that he, um, he was rejected for membership in the Doom Patrol, even though they took him under, under their wing. Um, so he tries to join the Teen Titans instead. Uh, by the end of the story, the Teen Titans ask the readers to write on, in on, or vote or something like that on whether he should be allowed to join. 
um, which um, I, I, I didn't realize until recently. It, it sounds like similar to what they did with death in the family, but with uh, lower, um, <laughs> with a lower death count. By the way, uh, apparently the, the vote uh, by the readers, the, it didn't vote him in. I, I, I think he briefly appeared uh, as a member of West Coast, uh, the Titans, or yeah, Titans, Titans West. So really, you didn't get Beast Boy as a full-fledged Teen Titans member until DC Comics Presents 26. I just feel like this book's just criminally undervalued. People don't even bother to slab it. There's only 86 in the census across all grades. The highest sale for a copy under 8.5 is $101. And 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 for 8.5s to 9.5s, for the sales range from 119 to 270. It just seems like uh, for such a, a character that's so closely associated with the team in animation and movies and streaming, uh, it, it, you know, it, it's it's like a minor key that someday is going to be a, a, I don't want to say a mega major key, but but more of a, uh, of a have more gravitas. Um, but so right now, I mean, you can you can grab a mid grade Raws for under thirty dollars, low grade under twenty dollars, um, and it has a Nick Cardi cover. How can you go wrong? Sounds like an editor couldn't uh, got pretty upset about um, Beast Boy not being able to join. But it sounds like a beast of a key. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like a first full cover too of Beast Boy, because a ninety nine is not a full cover. So. At- Number three, we have Secret Avengers, number 18, the Aja Shang-Chi variant. So I actually put this on the list a couple months ago. And because we have a period of time between when we put books on the list and we record, things happen. So credit to both CBSI and Key Collector. I think they both uh, published uh, about this a couple months ago. And then... I, I had to pull this uh, because I didn't, you know, I didn't want to make it, I didn't want it to look like, you know, oh, yeah, I, I'm just joining in the club. But uh, cre- credit to those guys for picking p- picking this up and, and definitely uh, publishing it first. Um, the thing I've noticed is this Chang, uh, Shang-Chi cover really has, has, hasn't hardly moved, even though a couple months have passed and even though the trailer's, uh, come at, come out. It, it's a. I don't think there's that many Chang Shang Chi variants out there. And this is by, by David Aha or Aja, who does all the Hawkeye covers. Everyone's um, uh, hysterical about uh, hysterical in a good way. Um, but th- I mean, this is pretty cool. It, it's you know he uses a duplicate image, which you know I think is Warhol esque. And I mean, you got that brain and blood matter spraying and through the air and it's just like damn wow so uh this is less than twenty dollars in the wild fifty dollars on ebay but copies haven't really sold so um it's one to keep a your an eye out for and I, i think that's uh pretty cool no matter how successful or unsuccessful the movie is yeah this is a really fun cover uh i Another fun cover, and uh, like you said, uh, the Warhol influence, this is just great pop art. Regardless, this is the type of thing that would look great in the slab. It, it, you know, it almost seems like uh, like a film cell. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, like on a reel. That, that's kind of how it seems. But, I mean, it's just spectacular. At number two, we have... Avengers Forever, number one. It's a Westfield Comics variant uh, by Carlos Pacheco. And the special thing about this book is that it's a limited print run. It's only 5,000. And it came out in 1998. A lot of the community is uh, speculating on a lot of these Kang books. And this is uh, one that flies under the radar. Uh, Definitely look into it. It's It's a beautiful cover, what I'm hearing. And what a lot of people are hearing in the community and, and know that Kang is going to be maybe the main antagonist um, for the MCU. 
So what's in the guts in this book is Immortus tries to kill Rick Jones. The, the Kree Supreme Intelligence empowers Rick with the Destiny's Force, a power that Rick uses to summon Avengers from past, present, and future to his aid. King versus Immortus War begins. Um, and there's also a first appearance a first appearance of the third Captain Marvel. I think it was a strong point where uh, Brian McClay was talk and Nico were saying that the story talks a lot about the the limbo, the temporal limbo. Um, so that could that could be manifested in the last episode of Loki or beyond. And uh, I've a lot of speculator groups have been pointing at this book as probably one of the most desirable or most high ceiling Kang variants out there on the market. It was an excellent pick by TJ. For our number one book, we have Marvel 2-in-1 Annual number 6. So here's the first appearance of American Eagle. He's also known as John Strongbow. He's an original Marvel Native American hero. I see this as an option for Marvel to use. Um, he could show up in the Echo series because of his heritage. He could possibly even show up in World of Wakanda as he was temporarily uh, a member of Agents of Wakanda. I do like this character a lot. He's a minority character. He's a little bit rough around the edges. He's got um, political experience in his background. He was uh, the mayor of his town. A lot of his peers also think he's like uh, sort of like a vigilante. So he does things his own way. Um, I like how Marvel went and scrubbed out this character's history um, and really, really modernized him to today's times. Um, I like the potential. I'm not saying that he's going to show up, but a definitely good option for Marvel to use this character at some point. Um, it's only five dollars right now and it's a square bound book so i i love the colors this is super ahead of the time for this color palette on the front cover with american eagle thing and claw so um definitely look out for this one All right. I want to thank everyone for watching the Perspect 10. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of the great content coming from this channel. Catch you on the flip side. Uh, this is, oh shoot. Hey, Aaron, we have the wrong cover for this one. Yeah. Plus, isn't it pronounced red sewn ja? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everybody says it wrong. See, uh, I ain't the only one. <laughs> it's <Sanja> boy, right? <laughs> oh, man.